Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. As you can probably tell by the intro, I'm back on the superchargers. I've decided to revisit the roots blower design and see what I can do with it now that I've learned a few things since the last time I've tried to make one. This design is actually rather similar to the other design that I had that was semi-successful, the one that blew apart. However, this one has actual bearings throughout and is much sturdier. Also, it's a lot larger both lengthwise and diameter wise. The diameter of the rotors is 45 millimeters, nominal, and the housing and rotor length is 60 millimeters. I never did calculate the total volume, I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. More working on feel than any actual scientific knowledge. For the engine, I'm going to be working with something a little more ubiquitous than my previous engine. This is a Honda GX200 clone. So the Chinese ripoffs of the original Hondas. My reasoning for this was to make something that'll fit ubiquitously to what something somebody else can get their hands on relatively easy. I was originally going to go with the 8090cc Harbor Freight engines, but these GX200 clones are about the cheapest thing you can get your hands on, so figured it's going to be the best bet for everyone on here. The engine I'm using here was originally used on a snowblower. So I gotta kinda clean up a few things and change some stuff to make it do what I wanna do. First off, I gotta get this pulley set off and it's fighting me, so I'm gonna have to dig out the puller. The old bearing splitter always seems to do the trick. Now to start putting things together. To drive the supercharger, I'm gonna go with a timed belt, which I bored and keyed the bottom end pulley and I printed the top end pulley to fit the supercharger. Now I had one belt on hand, but it's way too long, so I ended up printing one at a TPU, which so far hasn't worked so well for me, but this one seems to fit nicely. This will not be the permanent solution, but until the one I ordered shows up, this is what I'll be using till then. In order to keep everything lubricated and help with sealing, because there is no actual seals in this, my plan was just to pack everything full of grease. I'd also made everything out of tubing instead of hot solid shafting, which allows me the ability to pump the grease into the end of the shaft. I also fabricated up a little plate to mount it out of steel. I originally wanted to do this out of aluminum, but steel was just much easier to get a hold of and easier to work with for me currently. And with that, looks like I'm ready to give her a try. Up until now, I haven't spun this at anything over about 1000 RPM, which is below the point of efficiency. So I haven't really seen if it makes any pressure yet. So I'm going to start it up here to let it run for a little bit. If it holds together, hook up the boost gauge and see what kind of pressure I make. And so far I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to call that about 3.5, 4 PSI. Again, this gauge is terrible, but it, it gives me a real nice course measurement and I'm seeing the course measurement I'd like to see. Basically, if I can't produce 3 PSI, this whole thing is useless to me. Also sounds kind of mean too. Now for the attempt to run under boost. To do this, I'm going to run a pull through setup where the carburetor is on the vacuum side of the supercharger and the output side of the supercharger is connected directly to the intake of the engine. I have had issues with printed carb adapters before but I made this one nice and solid and then put some stiffening bars down the middle of it so hopefully it holds up and keeps pressure. Right off the bat, my sneaking suspicion is everything works properly and I'm just not getting enough fuel. However, I'm going to try spinning it a little bit faster with the drill and see if that'll do the trick. I don't imagine it's going to because I'm assuming the carburetor is too small.
doesn't look like the drills doing the trick I can feel the increased air velocity and vacuum but it's still not getting any fuel or at least enough fuel I don't know this carburetor is not that good it probably wasn't a great choice anyways but it's the stock carburetor and I was gonna see if I could pull this off without getting any other parts other than printed devices it looks like that's not gonna happen my quick solution for this is going to be a bottle with gasoline in it and a hole in the lid. This should do the trick and at least allow me to see if it'll fire up for a little bit and run under any sort of pressure. If not, I'll have to start seeing if there's any leaks in the system and start chasing them down. Alright, success, <clears throat> which definitely means it's a fuel issue, which I again figured was going to be an issue. But I'm still going to see if I can do some boost runs and see if I actually get any pressure out of this. For now, I just toss an elastic band over the throttle stop to make sure it pulls back to zero when I let go of it. What I'm going to do here is try and continuously manually fuel it, so manual fuel injection. At least long enough where I can do some RPM pulls and see if we produce any boost, at least under no load. If I see boost here, then it's definitely worth looking into fixing the carburetor or getting a larger one. I managed to get a couple RPM pulls there real quick and I didn't get to see it at the time but according to the footage looks like we have some boost pressure. The other thing that's very interesting to me is how much fuel that this thing can drink without choking right down. Now I'm not getting all the fuel actually in the engine however she's pulling about as much fuel as an average 12 13 horse two stroke would. Which then should get me the ballpark of what I need for a carburetor. Now I'm going to zoom in and slow down the boost gauge here and see what kind of numbers we actually see. Again, I'm going to state this boost gauge is not very accurate, but on average it tends to read below what it should be. So I might actually be up in the 5 PSI range, but I'm going to go with the conservative estimate, which would be a comfortable 3 PSI. It's a little hard to read. This will be fixed with some sort of load on the engine. From this point, I have two options. One, I can pop the jet out and see what I can do about making it larger. However, watching the boost gauge jump from vacuum to boost while the throttle was open leads me to believe that the carburetor is actually the biggest restriction in the system so far. Which makes sense when it comes to a draw through design or a suck through design because they kind of suck. In this application it's not a big deal. I got plenty of room to stick a bigger carburetor on here but in a <clears throat> automotive application you got to get rather large carburetors on a smaller engine and it all has to be done by the amount of volume you're increasing. If I go with a average of 4 PSI I can calculate the air difference going on the displacement of the engine throw at least a 40% inefficiency in there for good measure which should ballpark me a 252 stroke carb give or take. I guess there is another option I could go with the similar sized carburetor that has fully adjustable jets. I do have one of those around here somewhere so that might be my first course of action. Either way I'm gonna have to think about it for a little bit so I guess for now that's about all I got on this project. Now before you guys go I'm going to note that I haven't forsaken the centrifugal supercharger. I just wanted to try something I think I can manage a little bit more longevity out of. I do plan on sticking that system on the GX200 engines as well and building a metal box to stick it all in and just let her fly and see what happens. But I figured I could make quicker progress with a different design. This one doesn't hit the maximum RPM on the bearing, so I should be able to hold this together for a decent amount of time. The other advantage is there is no machining involved in this. I made it all pressed together with straight shafts, preferably tubing, but straight shafts would do the job. The only thing that you can consider machining is uh, cross drilling the bolt holes for the gears and drive lugs. I also have a few designs that are slightly larger, 
both an 80 and 120 millimeter length housing of the same diameter. I've been holding off on printing it till I could test this one. So far everything seems to be good so I might get underway in trying to make the bigger one as well. Either way my next video should be me finding a larger carburetor and sorting that problem out. I'd really like to see this run continuously and then maybe put it on some sort of load, maybe build up a dyno or just some sort of vehicle to run it on. A dyno would be ultimately the best. I'd have to take it all off and do a stock test to kind of get a baseline or find another engine. Either way, I'm just kind of rambling on here, so I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope to see you guys again. Take it easy, and have a good one.